Hare Krishna. So very nicely, Krishna is taking us through wonderful concepts one after another. So in the first section, from shloka number 1 to 10, what happened? Arjuna, he surrendered to Krishna as a disciple. And then Krishna started instructing. And one by one, now Krishna is taking us to the higher levels of understanding of transcendence. So from 11, shloka number 11 to 30, so there Krishna spoke in detail about the concept of body and soul. So that can be called as jnana. And then in the section that we just saw, that is from 31 to 38. So in that, Krishna spoke about doing one's duty to get better enjoyment. That is sort of karma kanda, sakama karma you can say. And then now we are going to enter a new section. And this section is extremely important and it's very, very important for all of us because it talks about really high aspects of uh, transcendence to reach the ultimate destination. So let's try to discuss this, starting with this section from verse number or shloka number 39. <laughs> Buddhir yogetva imam shruno, buddhya yukto yaya partha, karma bandham prahasyasi. So now, what is Krishna saying here? Esha te bihita sankhye. Esha te abhihita sankhye. Hmm. So Krishna is saying, till now, Esha te abhihita, I have described to you. What have you described? Sankhye, that is uh, analytical study. We will discuss about this word Sankhya. And then he says, Buddhir Yogetva Imam Shruno. So I have already told you about Sankhya. Now hear from me about Buddhi Yoga, that is working without getting attached to the fruits of the results or fruitive results basically. And then he says, Buddhya Yukto Ya Partha, O Partha. O son of Pritha, O Kshatriya, Buddhya Yukto Yaya. If you engage your intelligence, Buddhya Yukto, or if you act according to this knowledge that I am giving, what will happen? Karma Bandham Prahasyasi. So he is saying that if you act according to what I am going to speak now, then what will happen? You will free yourself from Karma Bandham. You will free yourself from the karmic bondage or the bonds of bondage of works. So let's discuss this verse, a very deep verse. So what is the goal of life? Goal of life is to break the cycle of birth and death. To be free or you know, the better word than free is mukti or liberation. To get liberated, breaking the cycle of birth and death. And only in human form we can do this. We cannot do in any other form. It's only in the human form it is possible. But then to break the cycle of birth and death, one should be free from karmic reactions. He should be free from karmic bondage. So how to be free from the karmic bondage that is spoken in this particular shloka. Now let's discuss you now word by word and try to understand. So now here he's talking about Sankhye. So before that, let's understand what is Sankhya. So Sankhya, Sankhya, Sankhya. So what do you mean by Sankhya? Samyak Khyayate. Samyak means complete and Khyayate is explained. So completely explained. Something which is completely explained or explained in detail. That is called as Sankhya. And what is Sankhya? Here Prabhupada writes, Sankhya means the philosophy which describes the real nature of soul. That is Sankhya. So if you remember, the section that we discussed from shloka number 11 to 30. So that section is basically talking about Sankhya. Hmm? Now, Arjuna gave lots of reasons for not fighting. And all his reasons are based on what? All his proposals are based on sense gratification. Hmm. They are based on sense gratification. But then here we are talking about Sankhya Yoga hmm? or we are talking about some yoga. And when we say yoga, it basically talks about controlling of one's senses. Mm -hmm. But then what about Arjuna's proposal? 
Arjuna's proposal is based on sense gratification. Now, what basically is Arjuna saying? Arjuna is saying, I will not fight you know, with them. And Krishna is saying, fight. So why is Arjuna saying, I will not fight with them? Because Arjuna feels that if he sees all of them alive, then you know, he will be happy. His enjoyment will be intact. So either he conquers them or they are left alive. Both of them, you know, they are pointing towards sense gratification. Because both of them are pointing towards his, his own enjoyment. So this sense gratification tendency which is there, that is a big block, that is a big block and that's what you know, we are seeing here. That why Krishna is speaking all these different aspects, to break you know, this particular concept which Arjuna has. And so he started speaking the Sankhya, that is uh, the aspect of body and soul. So if you remember some shlokas from this section, from 11 to 30, so the 12th shloka, Second chapter, twelfth shloka. Natve vaham jatu nasham natvam neme janadipaha na chainam na bhavishyamaha sarve vayamataha param. So, this shloka, Krishna is saying, Why are you worrying so much, O oh Arjuna? Everyone is eternal soul. They existed before, they are existing now, they will exist in future also. Never ever they will cease to exist. Why are you worrying so much? And also, in shloka number 22, he says, so he says, So here, in this particular shloka he is saying, So why worry? When no, they are going to leave this body, they are going to accept another body. Like, a person changes one's own cloth. If the cloth becomes old, he changes and puts on new one. Similarly, the soul will give up the old body and accept a new body. So why are you now worrying so much? So in this way, very very nicely, you know, in a very very nice graphical way, he gave the analysis of the body and soul. So this is called a Sankhya. Hope this is clear. This is very very logical basically. And then here Krishna is saying that okay, I have explained to you about Sankhya. Maybe that is very high for you. Let me explain something else now. And now Krishna is going to explain about Buddhi Yoga. Very, very important. So Buddhi Yoga, it refers to two aspects. So Buddhi Yoga refers to Bhakti Yoga also. And Buddhi Yoga refers to Nishkama Karma Yoga also. So we'll discuss about Nishkama Karma Yoga later. So now this section is talking about Bhakti Yoga. So we'll talk about Bhakti Yoga now. So in this particular verse, this Buddhi Yoga refers to devotional service to Lord Shri Krishna. That is Bhakti Yoga. So, what is Buddhi Yoga? A nice definition Prabhupada is giving. One who works for the satisfaction of the Lord only, however difficult such work may be, is working under the principles of Buddhi Yoga. So, when we work for the pleasure of Lord Sri Krishna, for His own pleasure, not for our pleasure, for His pleasure, <clears throat> without considering what uh, troubles we have to go through, that is called as Buddhi Yoga. And here, there is no question of sense gratification. There is no question of sense gratification at all. Yes. So, Krishna is saying that when you work according to Buddhi Yoga, then you will be free from all karmic bondage or free from the bondage of fruitive results. Now, when he is saying fruitive, fruitive results, what, what does it mean? The section that we discussed from 30 to 31 to 38, the section that we discussed, where Krishna is saying, fight, you will get heavenly planet. Mm -hmm. Even if you die, you will get heavenly planet. If you win, you will get the kingdom. So on the material platform is talking. So that is fruitive work. Mm -hmm. Where a work is done to get something. Get something for material gain, for one's own sense gratification. And Buddhi Yoga, you know, is a platform where a person is freed from the karmic bondage. Mm -hmm. So let's you know, compare and contrast these two. No, I have I've jotted down some points for this. So when it comes to fruitive work, so fruitive work is for one's own sense gratification. Buddhi yoga, it is for the pleasure of the Lord. So working in Krishna consciousness. And then when it comes to uh, fruitive work, it's for one's own pleasure 
or for the pleasure of one's own family or people linked to this body. But what about a buddhi yoga for the satisfaction of Krishna, the work that we do for satisfaction of Krishna. When someone does some fruity work, so at that time he gets entangled in the karmic cycle, the karma, kan, the karma bondage, the karmic bondage. And when it comes to buddhi yoga, the person is completely freed you know, from this karmic bondage and he becomes eligible to attain perfection of human form that is breaking the cycle of birth and death. So in this way, Krishna is saying that now I am going to explain you about buddhi yoga. And if you act according to this, then surely you will be freed from karmic bondage. And all of us are you know, fortunate because we are already practicing buddhi yoga. We are already practicing devotional service. In this age of Kali Yuga, just by chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, a person is practicing Buddhi Yoga on a very, very high platform. So, any work that we are doing, it should be accompanied by chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Yes, we have to give some exclusive time for chanting. No, we have to fix some uh, number and we will chant you know, those many number of rounds. But then along with that, whatever work we are doing, be it our office work, be it our household work, be it anything for that matter, during that work, this tongue should keep vibrating the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So whatever work we are doing, that also will get converted into Bhakti Yoga. Because whenever we remember Krishna, and when we are working for Krishna's satisfaction, that particular work becomes Buddhi Yoga or Bhakti Yoga. Now Krishna is going to dive deep into these concepts and also pull us to help us understand you know, all these different different concepts very very deeply. So let's understand this in the next few shlokas as well. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Don't forget to attempt the quiz and don't forget to put your understanding in the comment section. This will surely enhance your understanding and also the ones who are going to read your comments, that will surely help them. Thank you.